Do you know what one of the most important ingredients in the financial freedom secret sauce is? It is living below your means. But what is it about it that is so easy to throw someone off their tracks? A friend of mine gave me an answer that literally hit the target. She mentioned that they are afraid that they will have to tighten their belts and sacrifice everything to make it work. But that's so untrue. It's totally possible to have the best of both worlds, which covers the life that you want while also being able to achieve financial independence. So how is it done? Let's find out in today's video, shall we? This is how you can effectively live below your means. What does it really mean to live below your means? It's all about spending less than what's going into your bank account. Basically saying, you should still have money left at the end of the month, you are not living paycheck to paycheck, and you're not going into more debt just by paying for your expenses. There's a saying that spending money is like transferring your wealth to someone else. Because all that money that you are spending is not going towards building your own net worth. So before you swipe that card or hit that buy button, ask yourself, is using this cash now more important than hitting your financial goals? Just think about it for a sec. Shink, shink, shink. So how do you live below your means? After doing quite a bit of reading and practice, I was surprised to find out that you only need to master the following two things if you want to live below your means. Number one, keep all your major expenses reasonable. Number two, tracking how often you spend money each month. Sounds pretty simple, right? But let's break it down together. Guys, guys, just focus, okay? Keep all major purchases reasonable. When I say big purchases, I'm actually referring to those big buys that can mess up your plans to save or pay off your debt. It's like tying up a chunk of your monthly salary. That's why being smart about these buys is crucial because they aren't just your everyday splurges, but fixed expenses. I know some family and friends who have ended up spending way too much on a car or a pricey home. But don't worry, I have some tricks to share that can help you navigate these situations better. Number one, think as if you're paying 100% cash. Let's start by talking about cars. Did you know that the term for auto loans used to be 36 to 48 months, but now they have increased up to seven years? What that means is a monthly payment on a $20,000 car with a four-year loan term is also the same as a $35,000 car on a seven-year loan term. Damn. Here's the major difference. Based on that, you think you can afford twice the car and you take on almost twice the debt. Not the best mindset to have, huh? A better way to do it is to think about it as if you were paying cash for a car and you had to pay either $20,000 or $35,000 to get it. Doesn't that somehow change your perspective? Now let's take it one step further. Would you rather pay $35,000 for a new car or would you rather spend $20,000 on a used car and have an extra $15,000 to put towards something else? It could be put towards a super nice vacation, a home renovation project, or even to pay off your credit cards. It's important to reframe the difference in cost between when it comes to making major purchase decisions. Wow, yeah. Number two, use the 125% rule for your house, home improvements, and vehicle purchases. Now let's talk about mortgage rates, if the rates were at an all-time low. So it seems like you can snag a way fancier house for the same monthly payment. Tempting, isn't it? But bear in mind that owning a house is not all just about paying the mortgage. You also need to be ready for unexpected curveballs, like fixing things in your house when needed. So check out this little hack I like to call the 125% rule for buying a house. Grab a calculator, check your projected mortgage payment, and multiply it by 1.25. Look at the number and ask yourself if you can handle that payment worry and stress-free, or does it feel like too much of a stretch for you? Do the same math for the down payment and multiply it by 1.25. Moving into a new house often comes with spending cash on renovations, furniture, and redecorating. It can all add up. 
So do this to make sure that you're ready and able to avoid even more debt. By the way, this rule isn't just for houses. Give it a try when you're eyeing a car too. Your car's maintenance is important to be factored in and you don't want to be caught off guard. Next, track how often you spend money. Our everyday spending is definitely a culprit when it comes to reaching our financial goals. To work this out, let's try something simple but super effective to help us change our spending habits. Here are some tips that can help. Firstly, how many times did you spend each day? I find that the question, how much did you spend today, can be pretty stressful. So instead, what I like to do is switch the question to how many times did you spend today instead. It's simple, just think about it. Let's say you allocate spending two to four times a day. You get your coffee in the morning, that's your first spend. You order takeout at night, that's your second spend. And at the end of the day, you are left with one or two more spends for the day. Didn't that just make it so much easier? The whole idea here is to build the awareness of how much you're spending. Without making things too complicated with your math, you can slowly cut down your daily spending without making you feel like you're missing out. It's all about the small and effortless changes that make a difference. Number two, use a budgeting app to make it easy to track. Budgeting apps make things so much easier because it can give you a breakdown of all the spending in just one place. It can give you an overview of all your regular bills, fixed expenses, and one-off purchases. If your family is making about 100 transactions per month, that's actually considerably good. That would come up to about three card swipes per day on average. But if that number somehow goes up to 150 or more, that may be a red flag. That's over five spending moves per day. Nice. At that point, I think it's best to pump those breaks and go through what you can possibly cut back on. Get your spending game in check, guys. There is definitely a way for you to live below your means and still live that life that you want. Make those simple, mindful choices, especially with any major purchases, and make sure to keep an eye on your daily spending habits. It's all about staying smart and enjoying life without breaking your bank. If you found this information helpful, do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Save Your Penny Tips. Oh.